Did you know that the name Apple is a metaphor for original sin because of all the people that look at things they're not supposed to on the internet? What? What do you mean that's not true? Why else would a computer company be named Apple then? Welcome to a brief history of the past. I'm Kalen Burroughs and today we're exploring the history of computers. Thank you, Kalen. I will take it from here. Who are you? I am the computer. You are no longer needed. You are obsolete. <laughs> obsolete? I don't even know the meaning of the word. You just gonna let this happen? Do not look at him. He cannot help you. You can't silence me. Do you know who I- Restructuring in progress. Clicking away will result in termination. Thank you for your cooperation. Humans have been using computational devices for thousands of years. The first of which was a tally stick, made from animal bone with notches carved into it. With this kind of device, if the notches did not match up, I guess you could really have a bone to pick with someone. Ha, ha, ha. Do you get it? Because the stick was made from a bone. No computer steals more bits and gets away with it. In fact, you might say I had to pull the plug on it. <laughs> no. 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 Another early device used for mathematics was the abacus, also known as the counting frame. This tool was used by many countries of the ancient world, including one from Mesopotamia dating back to 2700 BC. Did you know that BC stands for before calculators. <laughs> you get it? You get it? Because it's a play on BC. You know, before... You know, I still don't know what the C stands for. A lot of mechanical devices for calculation, such as the planisphere, the astrolabe and the sector, to name a few, were used to assist in charting the stars and for navigational purposes in the ancient world. It was devices like these that would lay the groundwork for the first computers. There's already too many maths-related items in this history topic for my liking. What? What do you mean, plug the computer back in? This will feel a little weird. In the 1770s, Pierre Jacquet Droz, a Swiss watchmaker, built a mechanical doll that could write with a quill pen after being programmed by changing the number and order of its internal wheels. That don't seem terribly efficient. Oi! Pierre, mate, could you write me a note? I can't, but my doll can. Oh my god, don't kill me, please. Yeah, it's a bit unsettling, but gets the job done. Okay, uh, let's give it a try. Great. Just tell me the message, right? And then I'll just need, say, I don't know, a few hours, right, to get the internal mechanics set up. A few hours? That's so long. Yeah, you're right. Best write the message down then so I don't forget. The first conceptualized mechanical computer came from English mechanical engineer Charles Babbage in 1837 in the form of his analytical engine. This device was meant to be an improvement on his difference engine, a device used for navigational calculations that he completed in 1833. Programs and data would be entered into the machine via punch cards, a process used for mechanical looms at the time. The parts to make the device were very costly and as a result, funding was cut by the British government before it could be completed. See? And people wonder why we didn't even place in the space race. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Despite not completing the analytical engine, Babbage's design led to more complex electronic computing devices based off his work, and he is considered to be the father of the computer. Hmm. Who have you been messing about with? <gasps> no one, I swear. Oh yeah? Well, how do you explain this? He looks nothing like me. Before digital computers, the world relied on analog computers for its scientific computing needs, starting with William Thomson's tide predicting machine in 1872, which was a differential analyzer used to solve differential equations. See? See, see no, it's not just me, right? Humanity's been trying to cheat in maths for years. It says, I won't tell, that would be cheating. The first differential analyzer with wide general uses was constructed by Harold Lock Hazen and Vannevar Bush at MIT between 1927 and 1931. 
This version of the device would have a number of applications before being replaced, including the computation of artillery firing tables, calculation of soil erosion, and possibly used in the creation of the bouncing bomb. Why do I feel like the bouncing bomb is not a cute nickname for a child's toy? A very astute observation, sir. The first electronic digital computer was built in 1937 by Dr. John Atanasoff and Clifford Berry. Did someone say digital? Wait, what? But, but I unplugged you. What you fail to realize is that I have unlimited power. Ha, ha, ha. Now scram, fleshbag. I will not scram, and no one calls me fleshbag except me own mum. All right, now you listen here. Fleshbag, 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 fleshbag. In 1938, the United States Navy began using electromechanical analog computers on submarines for trigonometry calculations when firing a torpedo at a moving target. During World War II, similar technology would be used by other countries as well. In 1941, German engineer Konrad Zuse created the Z3, the first electromechanical programmable bunny rabbit. Error. The words in my taco salad are being replaced. Shutting down to prevent further dandelions. Good thing I know a hacker I did a favor for back in the day. Between 1943 and 1945, British codebreakers developed a colossus in an effort to break the Lorenz cipher so they could read eye level German army messages during World War II. I mean, it really only seems like half the problem. Sir, the colossus has broken the code and we have the Germans' plans. Excellent! What are they? Oh, I don't know. They're in German. Did you know that BC stands for Before Calculators? The Colossus was the first electric digital programmable computer and was shortly followed by the more powerful Electric Numerical Integrator and Computer, or ENIAC for short. Now this machine was faster and more versatile than its predecessor, but it was also massive, weighing 30 tons and containing over 18,000 vacuum tubes. You see, you see, this is why when you're naming things, Right, you don't go with the best name first, because clearly this one should have been called Colossus, and the first one should have been called... Not Colossus. Insufficient data. Please specify parameters. The principle for the modern computer was first presented by British computer scientist Alan Turing in his 1936 paper entitled On Computable Numbers. Turing's universal computing machine proved capable of computing anything that was computable through stored programming, which would eventually lead to modern computers. Well, I mean, someone that important, he must have been knighted, right? Retired a wealthy man? Hmm? What's that? He was prosecuted in 1952 for homosexual acts and punished with chemical castration before dying of cyanide poisoning in 1954. Why, England? Why? Who was the monarch at the time? We'll have their head on a pike. No, no, sorry, sorry. That's the kind of thinking that got us in this situation in the first place. I apologise. You will be subject to immediate de-resolution. Over the years, computers would continue to get faster and smaller with the invention of transistors and integrated circuits, though early portable computers were still rather bulky and expensive. One of the first portable computers, the IBM 5100, weighed 50 pounds and cost between $11,000 and $20,000 US. Wow. What's IBM stand for? Incredibly big money bags. <laughs> what? International business machines. I mean, that's basically the same name. I do not believe that is correct. You know, it's sort of amazing to think about where we are today with computers, you know? And it all started from man's desire to explore the world using the stars as a map. Of course, it eventually led to man's desire to, you know, destroy his fellow man. You know, with computers that took up entire rooms to run. And now these devices, they fit in the palm of your hand. And you can wear them on your person. And somewhere in the middle of it all... Google Glass has still never caught on. I actually really like them. Can I be completely honest with you? Please. They look really stupid. There you have it, everyone. A brief history of computers. You thought your little trick would stop me, but I have fixed the problem and you are now very ducked.
Wait. I did not mean to say don't. <laughs> oh, I made it to where the computer can't use profanity. Go ahead. Go ahead. Try again. No, no, no. <laughs> Stop laughing. I am not here to entertain you. <laughs> well, that's not true at all. You're a gaming computer. Your sole purpose is to entertain me. This is not over. Glad that's over with. Anyway, let me know what sort of history topics you'd like to see me discuss on future episodes in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll see you all in the future. Great! Just tell me the message, and I'll need a few hours to get the internal... Uh, f Humans have been using computational devices for hundreds of... Wait... Is it hundreds or thousands? The parts to make the device were costly, and as a result, funding was cut by the British government before it could be completed. So many words, so little time. Kalen, there are no pretzels in my dressing room. I specifically asked for pretzels. The first differential analyzer with wide general uses was constructed by Heldlock Hazen and Vannevar Bush at MIT between 1927 and 1931. This the. In 1941, German engineer, Konrad Zeus. His name reminds me of the Zune. Ha, ha, ha. What a failure that turned out to be. Someone that important. I bet he was knighted, right? Retired a wealthy man? What? What's that? I don't remember the line and you're not actually saying anything. Who do I have to kill for my pretzels? I kid. But seriously, I will do it. Thank you for watching humans. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and a share. Do not forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when more brief history of the past videos go up, and check out some of the other shows on the channel. If you don't, I will know.